Okay, so tell us sure. about... Uh, okay, well, the Men in Black phenomenon. The Men in Black, yeah. Part of it is a psychological operations unit within Majestic. And uh, they operate to scare people away from things that they've seen that they don't want them, you know, further bringing information out in the population of the so-called giggle factor. Anything above that, they, they attempt or have attempted, I don't even know that they're still in operation, to suppress. Then you have the real McCoy. The real McCoy is not human. The real McCoy is in fact a P-45J rod. They are using, through the use of some sort of sinuous biomechanical technology, the skin of a dead human. Wow. It is a dead human. These are the ones that walk up to you and they look like they're shuffling, like they've just filled their drawers. Uh, when they speak through this technology that they have wrapping around them, they sound very bland, very monotone, and they don't belong. You can tell very quickly that they don't belong. Um, have you met one? I've met several of them. Uh, they were operating around um, my work at Sun Chase before we were moved to a different location. Yes, they're very sallow in appearance. Um, they uh, thought that it was an appropriate expression to sing me happy birthday one year over at, uh, I think it was uh, the start of 2003. It was either 03 or 04. 03, I believe it was. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I did not like being around them, uh, and uh, they will not think twice but to use force on you. They will hit you. They will push you. One did me. Um, Marcia, uh, not uh, that long ago, got her fill of both types, both the psychological operations people who attempted uh, a few years ago to scare her off over at um, Winchester Park. These were Those were human beings. They were just striking fear in her. Uh, and one actual real McCoy um, nib. And um, this thing, I, I actually saw it first. It wandered onto, they get confused easily. That's a good thing. Uh, wandered onto our property uh, at, uh, well, where we're presently living. And I was walking home from her apartment at the time, and I thought a child was swinging on the swing. There's a swing set out in front of my apartment. Um, the closer I got, I thought that it was a, a little older kid wearing black. Then I noticed it had a hat on. And he said, swing, fun. He was lost in a memory, apparently, of the person that he was wearing. And I looked at him and got very afraid inside because they carry weapons. They can be killed with weapons, too. He was not supposed to be on our property. Our security did not do its real job. We're not worried about the two-legged real humans that just walk around. It's these things. Um, so he was the size of a child, is that no, what you're saying? No, he was, uh, he, he, it, I thought it was a child on the swing set as I was walking up. It was getting, it was past dusk. It was dark out there. So and he was a normal size. He was a normal size. Man, yep. full grown person. Yep. Yeah, he was wearing all black uh, and a black preacher's type uh, hat, round brimmed. How do you get rid of him? Well, how do you get rid of yeah. him? Yeah. Um, well, it would be very good if a, if, if a person could actually... Well, I've got to be careful in suggesting that. Because mm -hmm. they are still human beings. Mm -hmm. um, they took him into... Security ultimately took him into custody. I just want to be careful liability-wise of, of making a suggestion on how to get rid of one of them. But... Um, um, 
people could miss Q and, right. and we wouldn't want to have a problem. And now say, well, you know, Dr. Burrish said uh, do this or that. Um, there shouldn't be that many walking around to worry about. But uh, and, it, and it wasn't even sent there to deal with me. It was sent there to deal with her. And it found itself apparently lost in a memory um, in the swing set. And I said, good, swing to it. And inside I'm going, oh, shit. Walked in, keyed the door to my apartment, pressed the emergency button for security, hoping then that they were going to respond. Went in and told my, uh, my mother-in-law what was going on. She looked out of the window and said, yep. Yeah. She's been in the Majestic family all her life. She said, yeah. Then uh, the oldest got up, looked out the window, and said, that's what one looks like. It was her first experience seeing one. I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, Doris, uh, go over here. And I unlocked something, and I pulled something out for her. And I said, while I leave here, because I'm going to do the hurt bird routine, lead it away, because, I mean, we three kids in there. I said, I don't know what its intention is. It may have a, a, um, a lethal intention here, and it's just presently lost. As soon as it gets done swinging, it may pull a weapon out. I said, so if it comes near here, defend yourself and defend the kids. Meanwhile, I'm going to grab something else. Yes, I grabbed a weapon, and I'm going to try to lead it away. By the time I had the second weapon out and was armed, it was walking off already toward her <laughs> apartment's direction. So I said, okay, well, I still have to get it in case it turns around, because if it knows where I went into the apartment, I have to lead it away because there are kids in here, there's little girls in here. Uh, and so I walked toward it, past it, <laughs> walked clear by it, and it just continued shuffling ahead slowly up the sidewalk, gradually toward her apartment. Got over to her apartment. I said, where in the hell is security? So we were pushing buttons over there. Nobody's responding. Got on the radio. Nobody responds. I said, you have a MIB walking toward your apartment right now. She said, a MIB? I said, an ET. I said, they are dangerous, as you're well aware, but you know, it was her first experience with something. Um, I said, come here, look, it can't possibly, and I wanted to make sure that it wasn't walking back toward my apartment where the girls were. I said, it can't possibly have reached here by now. <laughs> I mean, it's walking slowly. And uh, so she came out with me, and uh, she went over by the, uh, the wall behind a, um, a bush, and uh, she didn't see it initially. It was hidden like in the recesses of the light as it was walking up in one of the, um, the um, shadowed areas because now the lights had kicked on the exterior of the buildings all of that and I walked up onto the sidewalk and saw it and I turned my back on it at that point they don't run so I turned my back on it and I said you may want to be going that way to Marcy and she said, because uh, she's not the faint of heart, uh, female, she said, why? And then she saw it over my shoulder and got her first, laid her first eyes on an ET. And her eyes got about that big, which is the normal reaction. And she walked give you some credit, she actually walked from there back toward the corner of the building um, before I saw her break into something more than a walk. She walked away from it. By then, I'm still standing there and this thing walked by me. Now I'm wondering what, why it's here. And I said, hi. And it turned this close to me and said, hello continued to walk. Walked right past me like I wasn't even there. Toward her. I thought, well, okay. 
it has an assignment. We don't know what the assignment is because it will not give up its intention behaviorally before it carries out its assignment. And I wasn't sure if it was armed or what, so I walked by it again. This is how slow it is shuffling. It walks like it's got poops in it, poop in its pants. I mean, that's how you can, I mean, they are, they are clearly not comfortable in the skin. I walked by it again. Now I have made certain adjustments to the firearm I had on me because I was figuring that whatever was going to happen, it was going to happen fairly soon. And if it pulled a weapon out, I was going to do what I learned in the police department and do it well uh, for parole probation. Got back to her, got all the way into her apartment, locked the door. I then said, I said, you go get your gun. If it pulls a weapon out, you've been a former cop too, do what you do and do it well. By that time, we were both shaking, figuring you know it was going to turn into something very bad. It sat down on the stairway outside of her apartment, and it had a bag with it. It was a black bag of some sort, and I didn't know what was in it. It could have been anything. And it just sat there. And then it got up, and it walked past her apartment. And now I'm looking at her like, what the this. Still no security. Finally, after it, it had made its way all the way to the, the um, basketball court area and stood there and looked around, still confused, security came up with its weapons drawn and took it into custody. Put it in one of the vans and off it went. It cuffed it like a human being would be cuffed and they took it. She got a couple photographs off. We actually, because it walked down toward the court, uh, I was looking through the window and said, well, there's no way it could hit us from here even if it does have a gun on it or whatever. Um, she stepped out onto her porch and she took a couple photographs. Uh, with a, it was a disposable. It was, I found a disposable camera. It was up on the bookshelf near the door, Order and I just disposable. grabbed it. And there was a. That's all I had. She my hand. she took a couple photographs of it, and we have since made those public on the Eagles Disobey forum. Those are real. It's the real shoot. McCoy. The best I could do. The enhancements that show one after another with it. You know, bringing it out from the background. Those are the best enhancements I could do because the original photographs that we put up there too, you saw, I mean, it was just basically jet black. Mm -hmm. There was no carrying of the flash, and it was not set for, uh, you know, night speed or anything like that. It was a, an indoor, outdoor type daytime camera, a disposable camera, but it was all that was available. Now, security took photographs and all of, and all of that, but they don't share them. Right. At the same time, I was doing my weekly reports, and I detailed it in my weekly report. And I allowed that weekly report to be made available, too, where I said, you know, the MIB was taken into custody and no one was injured. But, uh, yeah, he just walked onto her property. Assignment, still to this day, unknown. Mm.